Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Bedrock Guide. If you missed the last episode, we built this beautiful pirate ship. It's looking pretty great so far, but we've got quite a bit of detailing left to do at the very beginning of this episode today. It is not the primary focus of today's video, but we have some things that we want to accomplish. The first bit of detailing that I want to do is with these lovely chains that were introduced in the 1.16 update. And we're just going to go in here and hang them periodically throughout our sails. They're not going to be at the same height. They're going to be very random to kind of give a little bit of a tattered look. Hey, that's not bad so far. Really like that. Let's go ahead and do that to the rest of the sails. Pretty quick and easy, simple kind of detailing effect that you can do that takes less than two minutes. Hey, that looks pretty good. We've got some chains hanging from every single sail on the ship. Just kind of makes it look really tattered and it adds a little bit of extra flair. We also did add some connectors at the top of these. I know we've already got them here with the cross beams, but nice to have a little bit of extra support, keeping those sails in place when the, the wind is blowing strong and all of that. Uh, a little bit of casualty here, poking a hole in the ship. I think we have another one up here and there we go. So the next thing that we need to do, we need to have a way to get onto this ship if we don't happen to have our elytra on us, because right now there's literally no way to get in. So what I'm going to do, I actually don't think I need this black stone. We've already got a natural place right here or right here. This might actually be a better spot for it. We're going to put our ladders right here to get up to the side of the ship. And this right here is why you should be attending my streams on Twitch. If you're not, why aren't you coming? One of the fine folks on my stream, which we are recording this live in front of a studio audience right now, Crazy Breeze suggested vines instead of ladders. And I actually quite like the look of that. And I'm just kind of looking at the chat right now too. And they actually said, maybe try the nether vines as well. So maybe we'll try that. But I kind of like the look of something more natural instead of the ladders. So I think that's what we're going to stick with for now. We don't have enough vines yet in order to get a full ladder on both sides, but we'll let that grow out while we're working on some other things. What good is a pirate ship if you don't have any cannons? We need some cannons. So we're going to use this chiseled black stone, just like that, oak fences, and then we will go ahead and grab a campfire and we'll toss that on the top right here. And we'll grab our bucket of water and just douse that out just like that. So we've got a little nice frame around our cannon, uh, but we need a cannonball at the front of this thing ready to fire out. So we've got these really, really expensive top of the line wither skeleton skulls. Looks perfect, right? <laughs> You'd be intimidated if you saw that pointing at your pirate ship, right? The scariest cannonball in the world. And again, I can't stress enough the importance of coming to streams. You could be the one to give me a great idea, just like SD Heller just did when he suggested this. Oh, oh it's so good. Oh, I'm so happy. So there's no, there's no skeleton skulls at the front of our cannons now because they've been fired. And here's what I'm thinking. Over here, we're not going to fire any of these. This is safe. We don't need to fire any of these cannons because that's our base. We're not going to blow up our own base. That's a terrible idea. But over here, in a future episode or stream, we could build a pirate ship over here that's on fire. Maybe we could call it the SS Prowl. Who knows? But we could have more Wither Skeleton Skulls kind of out towards the ship and it looking like it's blowing it up. Oh, this is going to be so cool. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. What's next? And another great idea has just come in from stream. I was telling everybody I was going to put the dragon head on the front of the ship here and then just the name naturally followed. This ship with the Ender Dragon Head right there will forevermore be dubbed the Ender Pearl. It's totally got that Black Pearl vibes to it. Oh, it's so good. Ender Pearl. I love it. So huge thank you to Ith Ray Mesh for that name suggestion. That is a very, very eerie but awesome look right there. We've got soul lanterns lining the ship. We've got a few hanging from the bottom sails. The rest are just kind of placed strategically throughout the barrels. Speaking of, we also placed several of those around the ship, and a lot of them are strategically placed around the masts here just to kind of thicken them up and make them look a little less flimsy. And then we've got a few soul lanterns back here at the top of the command deck. Some other things that we've done, we've got this bad boy right here where every pirate ship needs a walk the plank. So we've got our plank and you know, let's just go ahead and test it out. Three, two, one, Geronimo! Is it too late to mention I don't know how to swim? 
Yeah, that's fine. We'll go down here and go over to our brand new shiny anchor that's got crying obsidian there. Thank you to Zero Cruel for that suggestion. And there's been so many suggestions. I'm sure I've left somebody out. I'm sorry if I forgot to mention you or shout you out. So many people have dropped some amazing suggestions for the features on this build so far, and we are not even done yet. So what I think I'm going to do is just keep working on this because I don't want to spend too much time today working on this stuff on camera. I'll come back and show you some of the fine details. And if there's anything to explain, we'll go over it at that time. Uh, so Prow thought it would be a good idea to add the mile long plank here. <sighs> It's a good time for him to walk the plank. And it's also a good time for us to mention that Prowl, he has finally had his first death of the series. <laughs> it happened live on stream. Oh my gosh, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. So for at least the time being, Prowl has more deaths than me in 2021. So far, I have not died this year. All right, after a lot of work, we finally have our pirate ship completely done. We've got a nice little captain's wheel here at the top of the command deck. And we got a back wall over here to complete the look with a few barrels up top. And then this barrel right here is actually pretty special. There's a bunch of fish in here and you might notice that it's ticking down slowly. There goes another one and another one. So where are all those fish going, you might wonder? Down here into the captain's cabin, which looks like we've had a zombie friend coming on in, breaking our door down. We'll have to fix that. But look, we've got a desk. We've got a desk with a treasure map and a compass and some lighting. And we got some cool Indrod lighting, a little potion brewing station, a picture. And uh, this over here, I think this is where we're going to put our comment of the day book. But we'll get to that here in just a second. Over here, that is where all the fish are going into, into this little smoker right here. Here. And if you don't know what this is, we're loading it up. It's almost completely full. This is going to be our new XP furnace located at the new base area. So we don't have to fly back over to the house to repair our tools. And we kind of hit it behind all these barrels to make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And onto our comment for today, you should put some dead coral on the keel of the ship to give it a barnacle look. Appropriately, the pirate skeleton happened to comment this. Thank you so much for that idea. And I actually had a few people suggest that. We'll show that off here in just a second. But over here, the cannons. I did make a slight adjustment to the two cannons that are firing the cannonballs. You might notice that they are pushed back a little bit because when cannons fire on a pirate ship, they do shift backwards, but we've also got some fire and smoke and stuff as if they fired the, the cannonballs. It just looks so cool, so cool, so cool. So underneath the ship here, if we can jump down really quick, we do have some dead coral fans just hanging out here on the bottom of the ship. I didn't want to overdo it. We got a little bit down here but I think that's pretty good. And I think that does it for the pirate ship. I think that's all of the detailing. I don't think I missed anything. Now, the next thing on our list for today, right over here, we've got a couple of doors. If you watched my sugarcane farm video, it also was coupled with a mending villager. Uh, you might recognize these traps. These traps are for not these guys, but their brothers, the zombie villager variety. We're gonna hunt around tonight to try to find a couple of zombie villagers because I've got a great idea for making a villager breeder that hangs right from that mountain peak right there. There we go. We've got four of them right here. We only need two. You guys come on this way. And they actually kind of look like pirates. No, don't fight each other. No, bad, bad skeleton. Come on, let's go. Oh, this guy, this guy. We're gonna trap one and then we'll come back for the other. If he loses interest, that's fine. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna stand through the doorway so he can like peek at us and then come on in, let's go, come on. And there we go, our first one is trapped, he is secure. If I were smart and I thought ahead, I would have brought some name tags with me, but I don't have any. So we're gonna have to hope these guys don't despawn or hopefully I can get them to hang on to something. Boom, we got both of our zombie villagers trapped. Hey, that guy held an arrow, perfect. All right, are you gonna hold an arrow? Yes, maybe. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure that this guy gets trapped in because he is secure. So no sunlight can touch him now, he'll be fine. And just for good measure, we're gonna punch this guy once. They should stay persistent if you punch him. So hopefully he doesn't despawn. This guy won't for sure. We're gonna go fly away, get a couple of name tags and name these guys really quick and then they'll be secure forever. Yep, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, so we've got one. We're gonna have to wait one more night 
to get our second. All right, we've got Barbacoa and Larry. Let's get these guys cured. This is the simple part. All you need is a splash potion of weakness. Throw that on that guy right there. You'll start to see the little black swirlies and then you feed him a golden apple and then you'll see the red swirlies and within a couple of minutes this guy will be a bona fide villager no longer a zombie villager we're gonna do the same thing over here to larry and then we should have two lovely villagers to trap in a cage <laughs> right up there on top of that mountain and there we have it our guys are converted into regular villagers they are safe inside of their doors until we're ready to transport them but before we can get them over we actually have to build the cage where they're gonna be so if we line ourselves up right about here i think this is probably a good place to start we're just gonna use our scaffolding to go up into the air and i think this is a good place to start we are gonna need some beds and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a platform right around here but we're gonna make sure to leave a two wide gap in the middle so this will be one as soon as we take out the scaffolding this will be two and we can just kind of go around on this little platform right here we are gonna place some beds but we don't have those just yet so we'll grab them here momentarily and then we're going to make sure to leave a gap between the surface of this one and the next platform that we're going to build in the exact same shape and then we're going to take a couple of iron bars and we're going to place one right here and one right here this is where our villagers are going to stand. It doesn't look comfortable. It's not supposed to, it's a jail. Then what we can do is place a few temporary blocks all the way around here so we can drop our villagers in place and then we will finish off the look once they're in. All right, we've got our villager walled off here so that when we break this door, there's nowhere he can go except for right here. We'll place a redstone block right here to power this rail. And then we've got a rail system that's going all the way up into the chamber up there. So here we go. Come on, buddy. Don't you want to go to your new home? He doesn't seem too eager to leave. Hop in. There we go. <laughs> so we can go ahead and break this. And we'll break the trap and we can send him on his way. And now the powered rails should do the rest. And there we go. Our villager has stopped short just of the chamber here, which is not a problem. We can go ahead and push him on in. And there we go. Villager number one is in place. Come on, villager number two. And send him on his way as well. I did a little bit of nudging and pushing around and we finally got the minecarts to drop right next to each other. So that is good. We're gonna go ahead and place iron bars around our cell here. And we do wanna make sure to do this before we let them out of their minecarts because we have a couple other things that we need to do. And generally you can hop over these iron bars here. So we wanna make sure that they can't get out. We're gonna build these up too high and then we will put on a roof as well. And then what we're gonna do is place a little bit of scaffolding and go up here to the top and start placing down some chains because we don't want this to look like it's floating in midair. It needs to look like it's suspended. That is not bad at all. We may beef up this little mountain ledge here with some terraforming, but that'll be something we either do in a stream or off camera. Let's go get some beds. We have our villagers trapped in the cage, but we are not able to breed villagers yet. In order for this thing to work, we need to make this a village. And in order to make a village, you need villagers and you need beds. So we will place a bed right here and we'll place a bed right here. This is technically a village now, and we need to be careful to make sure that there are no other villagers within 80 blocks of this area. You might see the little green sparkles that means these villagers can connect to these beds and have done so already. And if we look around the area, there are no other villages. The only thing that we have to be concerned about is this little square right here that you might have seen if you were watching closely earlier in the video. I've kind of plotted out maybe where I want to put my iron farm, which will also technically be considered a village. So I'm thinking we may end up pushing this that direction a little bit just to keep it safe, keep it away from those village mechanics whenever we get around to making that farm which honestly is not going to be too far into the future iron farm is coming soon okay guys i'm gonna level with you it's been a long time between the last clip and now and we did some testing and unfortunately throughout all of our testing we were not able to install a fully functional baby filter essentially what it's supposed to do is keep all the babies in one chamber until they grow to adulthood and then when they get to adulthood they would drop into a different chamber so that you can automatically take them out with minecarts and things like that. That way you're not having to mess with sorting out babies later on. Unfortunately, I think due to some of the bugs in the game right now with hitbox issues, glitching through blocks, 
things like that. Either the babies would be floating up into the water when they shouldn't be and floating on into the regular adult villager chamber, or when they grew to adulthood, they would glitch through the wall and start taking suffocation damage. Either way, that's no good. Trust me, I tested about five different designs. So until we can figure out a better solution, we're just going to put them all into one chamber. We're not really gonna be dealing with that many villagers anyway, so it's not that big a deal. But before we can get to that, we need to make sure that we keep these villagers clean. They are allowed to have food. None of the villagers down in the holding area are allowed to have food. Because if we wanna set up a crop farm or something later on using villagers, they can't have anything in their inventories. So we just need to make sure that they are clear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a trap door right here and a trap door right here. Then we're gonna run back here and break these couple of iron bars. And we're gonna put a solid block here and a solid block here. We'll actually go ahead and break that one for a minute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That was close. And we'll make sure to put a piston facing this direction right here. And all we gotta do is flip the lever, press that block forward, and then we're good to go. We just wanna make sure this villager stays put when we're shoving the trap doors into place. And I think he's out of the way, so we'll just go ahead and place that one there. Perfect. We'll put iron bars back there again momentarily when we're done situating our villagers. We can put a piston facing that direction and then drop a lever. And then bada bing, bada boom, that guy is shoved into place. We'll break that. And then we'll move it over and do the same thing one more time with this trapdoor. And bada bing, bada boom, we've got a clean villager breeding system. So basically what this is gonna do, if we come up top here to feed our villagers, when we toss our potatoes into this hole, they will land on the trapdoor until they pick them up. So we're not gonna get any potatoes falling down into our holding chamber. And if they toss them back and forth to each other, they should land on the trapdoor as well, preventing any baby villagers from picking up any food. Then all we need to do to activate this thing is place down some more beds. Cause right now two is the maximum that we can have. Two villagers, two beds. If we add more beds, say we add one more, we'll have three villagers, including the two up there. So one baby villager to drop down. If we add two more beds, two more baby villagers, three more beds, etc., etc., etc. I'm not sure how many we're gonna put in just yet. We're gonna probably keep it relatively small, but enough to at least fuel our iron farm when we get around to building that. And I've already spaced out a platform down here for our drop area. And technically we really only need a space about this wide, one by two, but I kept it a little bit wider so that we could avoid any unintentional escapes if they happen to accidentally hit the side of the wall and fall out. This way we're just avoiding any loss. So then on this perimeter right here, we can go ahead and put glass and then we'll just go ahead and fill it up like that. Then the last thing that we need to do before this is ready to activate is take one bucket of water and we'll drop it say in this corner so that when they do fall in here, every villager is going to be forced to this corner of the chamber. What this is going to do for us is when we are ready to transport these villagers, we can actually break this corner block out, drop a minecart system right here, and then a minecart will be able to pick up a villager through the corner of that block and then transport it to wherever we wanna go. Again, not something that we're gonna do today. And to protect these guys from any potential zombies glitching through and hitting them from the outside of the box, we'll cover all corners for the time being until we're ready to transport our villagers. We are ready to activate this farm. So we're gonna go ahead and go around this platform right here and place down our additional beds. So that will give us a total of five beds in this area, which will give us three baby villagers. I think I do actually want a few more than that. So I think I'm gonna build an additional ring underneath this one and we'll attach some chains to it just like we did with this just to make it look a little bit more realistic so that it's not just floating there all right so our second ring is in place and we'll go ahead and put a bed right there right there right there right there and right there so now we have a total of 10 beds between the two platforms and those 10 beds will get us eight baby villagers at a time to grow into adult villagers. Once again, once we fill up the capacity of this holding area with eight baby villagers that will eventually grow into adult villagers, we will not get any more spawns until we transport one of these villagers outside of the radius of the village. So basically transporting it over to a farm or the iron farm, whatever we happen to have at the time, we just need to make sure that they are no longer a part of this village. So now that we've got everything ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and feed these guys our potatoes. If you don't happen to have potatoes, you can feed these guys bread, beetroot, and carrots as well. But all you gotta do is just take aim and toss a few potatoes at each guy. I believe it takes about 12 potatoes 
per villager for them to become willing and they have to be willing in order to breed hey so there we go we got the love hearts flying around the villagers are happy they're willing and we should see a baby villager drop down sometime in the short near future hey yo there we go we've got our baby villager and he is down into our water chamber floating in the corner just like we want him now again I've already mentioned this, but once you break this corner out, you are able to pick these guys up through the glass without causing them any damage, pushing them into a minecart and off to wherever you want them to go. But the downside to this as well is if a zombie finds himself into the corner here, then kaboom kaboom can hit this guy, transform it into a zombie villager if you're on hard mode a chance of a zombie villager if you're on normal mode and basically just going to kill all your villagers if you're on easy mode so be careful with corners make sure they are secure until you're ready to transport these guys off and away hey we've got another baby villager that's fantastic we're gonna have more before we know it and i know we talked about the whole filter idea of filtering out baby villagers from regular ones just so we can transport them easier but honestly unless you're dealing with mass quantities of villagers it doesn't end up being that big a deal but if you guys guys have any confirmed baby filters out there that you would love to share with me be sure to drop those over on my discord and maybe i'll build it in this world as well but guys that is gonna do it for today's episode we're just gonna hang out over here for a little while and wait for these guys to breed up and for our baby villagers to grow up we'll be talking more specifics about villagers and villager trades here in the coming episodes as we build our iron farm and villager trading hall more information on that coming soon if you're interested in the villager mechanics themselves if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a comment in the comment section to let me know something that you liked and something that you learned also don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more bedrock guide content just like this but thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one